so today we have um, uh, Omar, oh, sorry, Omer Lever Hevroni from Sneak, who's a company that you've probably heard of. Uh, so we'll get right into that because we'll be talking about security, which is um, and keeping secrets in a very important uh, topic for this space. Uh, so before that, I'll do a quick, quick intro. So just get a minute of your time. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Stacy and I and a couple of us in our developer experience team work at a company called Weaveworks. Uh, we're based in London. We're also sneakers. I think we're in the same building. Uh, and then San Francisco, New York, uh, Colorado, and um, Berlin. So uh, we've uh, been in this space for a while. And uh, if you've heard of the technology RabbitMQ, our founding CTO and CEO, Alexis Richardson, are the people who created the technology RabbitMQ and the company around that uh, and sold it to VMware. Uh, then fast forward, they noticed needs in the container space and in the, at the time, growing Kubernetes space and started building projects and then products around there. And so the company WeWorks was formed. Um, we're a VC-funded uh, startup, uh, Excel Partners and others, um, but I'll mention Google Ventures that kind of uh, uh, sort of uh, strengthens our you know, commitment in the Kubernetes space. Uh, I mentioned that we've had projects. We have many, many open source projects. And hopefully, if you're here, you're here because you know one of these. Um, probably WeaveNet is our um, oldest that we've had that is still one of the premier projects to um, network your Kubernetes clusters. Um, we have Flux and Cortex that are in the CNCF. Um, maybe a lot of you know about Flagger, which Stefan on our team created and provides things like Canary deployments um, that are very cloud native and based on Kubernetes, as well as many, many others here that uh, we haven't even listed and some that are listed here. So um, if you're interested in any of these, they're all on our GitHub um, page. I think it's github.com slash weaveworks, um, except for those that of course are in the CNCF. So you can find those on the CNCF repo. So please, yeah, check those out. If you like them, give us a star. Um, and if you'd like to contribute, uh, let us know. Uh, so also we are a company, so we do have a couple of paid products. So um, our first one is called Weave Cloud, and it's a SaaS product for you to do Kubernetes um, uh, monitoring, management, and automated deployments. Uh, in some ways, it utilizes some of those open source technologies I mentioned. So it's sort of those as a service with enhanced capabilities, of course, with UI. And in particular, um, the strength is having hosted Prometheus. So if you're looking to have Prometheus, um, you, but you don't want to install, maintain, or manage it, and you want it to be nicely plugged into things like the automated deployments that come from Flux, um, which is really the core of the GitOps that we've got, then um, please check that out. We've been running that on, uh, we've been running Weave Cloud on Kubernetes on AWS for four years now. So we have experience of running Kubernetes in production for four years. Uh, so as we we're progressing, a lot of people were asking us for help, as well as um, more of a product that would help them get started in that direction. So we have productized the sort of both the Kubernetes distribution and the GitOps capabilities um, that we used and created for Weave Cloud, and now we call it Weave Kubernetes Platform. So of course, with the taking off of the term GitOps, um, it is a very GitOps aware enterprise platform. So if you're looking to get started with Kubernetes or you want to advance your Kubernetes capabilities to include GitOps, um, please uh, reach out to me or check out our website. Um, and we do offer some consulting training and support because we do have that experience. Um, so thanks for listening. Uh, if you haven't heard us before, welcome. Um, our website is weave.works. And hopefully a lot of you heard about the event that we just did called GitOps Days. Uh, we did that for the US time zone. And if you go to the website, um, you can still sign up, you can still register, and you'll get an automated email that gets you to a couple of really important things. The GitOps conversation kit that I created and is still improving um, that uh, will help you to move the needle with GitOps in your company. Uh, and then we're also planning a GitOps Days uh, for Europe as well. So make sure that you're registered so that you will both get the link to the GitOps conversation kit um, and an invitation to a mailing list that's just for the GitOps conversation kits and GitOps related things. So we are creating a very not noisy uh, GitOps specific um, mailing list. So uh, if you register at GitOpsDays.com, you will get the invitation to that as well as to the kit. So please check that out. 
So with that, uh, we will move on to our guest speaker that we're really lucky to have, um, who's an AppSec engineer at SNCC, um, and be talking about keeping a secret in the GitOps ways. So if you've been here before, you know that our WOOVs or Weave Online user groups um, last usually about 30 to 45 minutes. It's usually about 45 minutes. Uh, so we'll um, have a talk, we'll have some Q&A. So that's usually the amount of time that we have. If you guys have burning questions and it keeps going, we will allow to go over time, but with a hard, hard stop at 60 minutes. So we'll end at the top of the hour uh, or at the end of the hour. Uh, hopefully, in these COVID times, you guys are pretty familiar with Zoom, which is the platform that we use. Um, if you aren't familiar with it, please check it out uh, and make sure that you know where the chat box is, because that will be the way that you will ask questions. Uh, if you don't see the button for the chat box, then sometimes hitting escape gets you out of full screen mode and you can see the full panel capabilities of Zoom and you can find chat, which sometimes is on the right hand side under more. So hopefully you've been able to find that. Hopefully you've been able to hear me and see our slides. But if you have any issues, please let us know in the chat, which I actually see that some people have mentioned. So looks like we are good. Um, I heard that Omer is good to take questions throughout. So I will be monitoring the chat box. Please ask your questions there and make sure that's right to say, uh, send your questions to all panelists and attendees. So then that way uh, everybody can see your questions unless you have something that's burningly private. Um, otherwise, we'll be copying pasting your questions to everyone. And a lot of times people like to help each other. So excuse me. So if you're trying to um, answer each other's questions, make sure you say to all panelists and attendees. Uh, so with that, I will hand it over to Omer. Hi, everyone. And thank you for joining us. I will stop and sharing. I think I took over sharing. Let's see if that's actually what. Yes, looks good. Cool. So good evening or morning or wherever you are. Um, thank you so much, Tamau and everyone at WeWork for having me, Tamau and Stacy and everyone. It's my pleasure. And um, following WeWork for a long time and using a lot of the stuff they are doing. So I can really recommend them. And today we are going to talk about two things that I am really, really passionate about, secrets and GitOps. And we're going to talk about the intersection in what is not always so trivial. Basically, the question we're going to ask is how we can share something sensitive like API keys or database credentials, encryption keys, or everything else we use to protect our assets, like user data or anything else that needs protection and how we can share this data with the platform running on our code so no one beside this platform will get access to it. After all, if someone will get access to it, they basically have access to the data itself. And this becomes more interesting when talking about GitOps because in traditional deployment pipelines, we had a place to intervene. So we could store the code and manifest files in Git and then have the continuous deployment pipeline so, somehow inject those secrets from somewhere else. But when talking about GitOps, everything happens in Git. We store code and manifest files in Git, and the deployment is simply pushing something. And once we push, a magic happen, Flux or Algo, for example, will notice the change and apply them to the cluster, which raises the questions of what we do with secrets. Well, after all, uh, how we can keep them secret and still use a GitOps mechanism? And this is a question I want to answer today. And before I answer that, I want to uh, introduce myself quickly. Um, so as I said, my name is Omar, and I really like computers from a really young age, always like to build stuff with them. And the re last recent years, I did the shift to uh, application security and DevOps, and in the Recent month, I started working at SNCC, a company that helped developers all around the world to secure their workload. Uh, so you're more than welcome to check us out. Uh, and because of my unique background, I'm familiar with both sides, how developers like to do stuff fast and don't bother us, and how security like to do, to do stuff. Stop what you're doing and start secure stuff. And I want to find tools that help both sides. 
So with that in mind, let's go back and talk about the problem. Actually, why not store the secrets in Git? If the repository is private, why there is a problem? And the problem is fundamental with Git. After all, you're probably familiar with the fact that Git is distributed. So anyone that clone our repo have all the repo, including history and everything that ever committed to it, including all the secrets, which is something we might, want, we might not want to do. And if we want, some hard proof. It's part of our top 10 in a pretty serious place, part three, is sensitive data exposure. And because of all that, we might want to find an alternative solution that is not storing the raw secrets in Git. And before we go to that, let's do a quick recap on Kubernetes secrets. After all, secrets is a pretty fundamental problem. And Kubernetes pretty much solved it. If you look at the documentation, they created an object that had intent towards sensitive information, like what we want. And they put a lot of mechanism in place to ensure that this object stays secure. And you can look on the design to learn more about it, but it is really, really impressive. And there is any kind of mitigation in place you might think about. But there is only one problem. This is a manifest for creating a secret. Um, so you have the kind of the secret, in this case, type of Akio, and you have the data, which is the secret data, username and password, and this is where the problem lies. If you look at the data, you might notice that it's base64 encoding. Uh, and indeed, if you continue with the docs and get to the part called security consideration, where usually developers skips because it's boring, and only apps like geeks like me bother to read, you see that they say never, ever, ever commit the raw manifest file to Git because it's base64 encoding, which is basically the same as raw file. Um, and it makes the secret compromised. And of course, the sentence, I'm sure at least one of you heard at least once in the life, base64 encoding is not encryption. And this is where things get complicated. Uh, we need to find a way to use Kubernetes secret mechanism without storing them in Git and still store them in Git. And because of that, there are a few popular solutions for creating encrypted secrets. This is basically identical to Kubernetes secrets. Just instead of having the raw secret in Git, we have a file that is encrypted and we can safely commit it because assuming the encryption done correctly, no one can decrypt it. So even if a lot of people have access to the files, they have nothing to do with it. And on the other hand, it's transparent for the app. There is a magic, a controller usually, that decrypts the file and create regular secrets for it. So if you are already using Kubernetes secrets, moving to encrypted secret is really easy. And let's take a look at one solution, sealed secret. Oops, this is sealed secret. Um, and it looks really impressive. It looks very similar to the secret we already saw. We have the type and we have the data encrypted. Um, and this is something we can actually use to solve the problem of GitOps and secrets. But this solution is not perfect. And the first question we need to ask is, how, which keys are used for encryption? Because if the keys are weak or stored insecurely, the encryption is meaningless. In the case of sealed secret, we have single key pair for, uh, for the entire cluster. There is a mistake on the slide. It should be per cluster or per deployment of sealed secret. So if you have one controller for the entire cluster, all your secrets will be encrypted with the same key pair. What happens if this cluster goes down? You need to back up these keys, otherwise you have no way to decrypt your keys. What you do if you have multiple clusters? How do you manage environments? And a lot of other questions. Uh, Hemp Secrets is another solution and it's used open source by Mozilla called SOPS, which is kind of better. Uh, it has support for uh, AWS and GCP key management. So it solved the problem of key management, but both has the same issues where the same key is used to encrypt all your data. So if the, this key is leaked, you are in a problem. 
Uh, as I said, CLC had capital to a specific cluster, NFC had capital to a tool. So if tomorrow you want to use customize or God forbid, JSONet, you are in a problem. And the last thing is a bit uh, nitpicking, but uh, in both solution, each time you want to edit a value in the secret, you had to uh, decrypt and re-encrypt the secret, which means all your developers need decrypt and decrypting solutions, uh, which might be a problem. And because uh, out of that, uh, now I can go back in time. Uh, it was, I think, middle uh, 2018. Uh, I worked at Solot at that time. Uh, and this is where we was. We looked for a good solution. And basically, I wasn't happy with all the existing solution for the reasons I already explained. And I couldn't find any tool that would look good enough. So one day I was working on an open source and it used Travis. And I know Travis is kind of dead, uh, but at that time it was really cool, Travis. And Travis has a really interesting solutions for secret. In Travis, you can encrypt a secret for a specific repository. And only builds running on these repositories will be able to decrypt it. So if you can take Travis files with, an, the crypt, with encrypted data and you put it, put it on another rep repository, the decryption will fail because it was encrypted for a specific uh, repository. And this is because Travis is intent to encrypt files and data that will be stored on an open source repository. So they had to be something really strong. And when I saw that, I was feeling an Eureka feeling, uh, something that I was really wanted to have for Kubernetes. And this is how Camus was born. It's basically the same thing as Travis, just for Kubernetes. So it's an open source project that I was writing when I worked for Soluto. And it has the fundamental idea of encrypting a secret for a specific application. So instead of having one keeper for all your secret, you have keeper for each application identified with the service account. Um, and we offloaded all the hard stuff like encryption to cloud. So we have support for all the major cloud provider, AWS, DCP, KMS, Azure Keyword, all of them offer HSM and we will look also into CRD in a minute. So let's talk a bit about identity. Uh, if you're familiar you with Kubernetes, yes. Um, do you mind if I jump in? There was a question right before you yeah. went into this section. Um, does SOPS use namespace and secret name the same way sealed secrets does? So no and secret can be stolen from one namespace to another? Again, sorry, I didn't. SNPS. I think it should be SOPS. Uh, yes, yeah, it says SOPS. Does yes. SOPS so, use namespace and secret name the same way sealed secret does? Yes, uh, basically SOPS only does the encryption. Helm secret is a plugin for Helm that leverage uh, secrets, that leverage SOPs to decrypt, uh, to decrypt uh, secrets. So it's basically run your Helm install. Your files are stored encrypted, and then before doing the apply, the plugin will decrypt them and then apply them. So it's similar to state secret, just instead of doing the decryption in the cluster, it does the decryption in the, um, in the deploy tool. So for example, if you're using Argo, you will have to put the decryption key in the Argo controller and install the plugin. I hope that answered the question. Seems good, thanks. Yeah, so going back to Camus, we talked about encryption for a service, for an application. And we do that with a Kubernetes object called service account. The service account is a special Kubernetes uh, object that aims to give an identity to an application. And it has JWT token we can use for authentication. And if we open it using tools like JWT IOs, we can see we have here the namespace and the service account name. So when we encrypt a secret, we can specify what we want to encrypt. Uh, oops, sorry. And to which service account and namespace we want to encrypt it. And now only applications running with this service account will be able to decrypt it. So if we go back to this, 
we can now put the secret encrypted in Git, like we do in Seed Secret, just uh, this time it will be encrypted for this application. Uh, and one uh, interesting question is, what is Camus? So to the all known Hebrew speaker, Camus in Hebrew mean something that is secret or hidden, and this is why we choose the name. Um, so just a few more things about Camus. Uh, first, the permission model is very simple. And this is, was one of the design ideas. Anyone can encrypt, but no one can decrypt. Only applications running with the matching service account can decrypt it. And this makes the attack surface a lot more smaller because there is no specific admin roles or whatever. Once you encrypt it, there is no way to decrypt it back. And this goes also to the issue with a seed ticket where you had to have the ability to decrypt. Here, you can't do it. And we will see in a minute how this plays with um, editing secrets. Um, so first, the first way to use Camus is an init container. You can have a config map with keys and values that will create a JSON file with the decrypted values, or you can have a template. So here we have a template using a, a key, and this way you can create any kind of configuration files you need with the encrypted values. So now if I want to add or modify anything, I don't need the decrypt abilities. Uh, I just need to encrypt this specific file. And of course, there is also support for CRDs. And you can see that this looks exactly like um, Kubernetes secret, just this time the values are encrypted. Um, so this was about Camus, and Camus is one option but there is one option, there is another option that is not that trivial, which is storing a reference only. We talked a lot about GitOps and the problem of storing a sensitive value in Git, but we don't have to store it in Git. There is nothing that say, if it is GitOps, you must store it in Git. Um, and this is a solution called external secret. In external secret, you store your secret in any kind of backend, and a lot of backends are support like AWS System Manager or GCP Secret Manager or even HashiCorp Vault. And you store a reference in Git like we see here. This is a specific object called external secret. And in the spec, we specify which backend it is and which data to bring. And a new secret will be created from this backend. So this is a very, very different approach for solving the same, that, the, same, that, the same problem, sorry. So wrapping up, we started with this problem and we saw a few solutions for it. Uh, for it. We talked about Kubernetes secrets, Seed secret, Camus and external secret. Uh, and now you know that, yes, you can use GitOps and still stay secure and keep a secret. It's only depend on which tools you use based on um, your use case and limitation as an organization. Um, any other questions? Not right now. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining. Uh, you're more than welcome to ask anything on Twitter and I'd be happy to help with any question. And have a great evening or day wherever you are. All right, thanks. We'll uh, give people a couple minutes. Uh, we have one question here. Let me make sure it's shared with everybody. Sebastian, make sure you send it to all. <laughs> one of our friends here. Uh, so the question here is, uh, the keys we saw earlier, are those secrets too? Um, if it's a, it's a thing, I think, to Sorry, and I, I will just share my screen to make it easier to understand. Just a second. And while we're waiting, um, someone has a raised hand. Uh, unfortunately, in Zoom, I can't really like respond back. So hopefully, you can uh, put your question in the chat. And then the follow-up was. Is there a bit of a who watches the watchman problem? 
Okay, so let's take first the first question. You can see the slides again? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I think, please correct me if this was wrong, but it was around these keys. And these keys are encrypted. Uh, so they are not sensitive and it is safe to uh, encrypt them. To, it's safe to store them in Git. So I hope this answered the question. Uh, regarding who watched the watcher, well, there are two aspects to that. The first is how Commons is secure. And we have a lot of information about that in Commons Solutory O. I will put it on the chat also. We have public threat model and a lot of other stuff. But the main thing we did for security is using cloud um, encryption services. So um, because of that, there is not a lot of need to watch the watcher because as long as you keep those credentials to those services secure, there is not a lot to worry about. And I hope this answered the question. There is another interesting question, which is how do you install Camus? After all, I just say that Camus need credentials to access the cloud provider and you need to keep those credentials very, very secure because those are the most sensitive um, credentials. And this is a very hard to solve problem and it's usually best to solve it using uh, tools like uh, GC GKE workload identity or EKS pod identity where you can give a YAM role to a specific application and then you don't need credentials to access the cloud. So I hope this, uh, that answer the questions. If not, please ask it again. Okay, yeah, and he confirmed that these are the keys in config maps in Camus. So yes, yeah. those, excellent. Uh, I see the questions for- uh, Hold on, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in the order. So, um, okay. so yeah, one of the questions about, uh, was about external secret. Uh, since Git is now um, not self-sufficient, um, you know, there's a discomfort level potentially with that. I need to rely on KMS somewhere or Vault. So, yeah. As I said, the no solution is perfect for everyone. And it really depends on what you need as a company and what more works more for you. For example, it's right, it's right to say that you need to rely on something else, but um, there might be use cases where you don't want to mess with storing secrets and Git and you prefer to store them externally. Um, so I just want to put all the options on the table so you can choose the one that works best for you. Uh, there is no one answer fit all and it really depends on what issues are you trying to solve, what, what is your risk models, what is your risk appetite. Um, so I hope this kind of answer that. Okay, excellent. Um, so then we have a question from Kingdon says, does a uh, Kamu secret create a secret object in Kubernetes like sealed secret does, or does the pod reference the Kamu secret directly instead? And then following, does it create a decrypted secret that you use like every other secret with a reference in the pod spec? So yes, um, I know it was a bit unclear, but basically there are two ways to use Camus. The first one is using Kamu secrets that basically work exactly like sealed secret and the format is a bit different instead of having everything encrypted you have the keys and values and the second option is with the init container this is an example of usage of the init container you create a config map containing the keys uh, and the values that are encrypted <clears throat> and the init container will read it and generate a decrypted config files config file with the values from the config map so you can we support both of them, and you can choose which one you want based on uh, your need. For example, usually for third-party applications that relies on Kubernetes secrets, you want this one, but this one is a bit more fl uh, flexible, especially because of the templating support. Take example, Alert Manager, where all the configuration is not sensitive, and there are some small parts that are sensitive. So you can put here all the stuff that are not sensitive with just references to things from here that are uh, sensitive and the init container will decrypt and fill in the template with the decrypted values. Awesome. And uh, Kingdon adds, great. So with the templates you can do without, that's awesome. Cool. Uh, we have another question, is Camus production ready? 
So I, we consider it as production ready. It's running in Soluto for the past year and a half. And we have a few other uh, users. Uh, we have relatively active uh, Slack workspace, uh, almost 600 uh, stars on GitHub. And please tell us uh, if you like the solution. Um, we are very responsive to issues. And we try to solve them fast. And we saw a lot of users using it. So yes, we consider it production ready. Excellent. Are there any other questions? Those are great questions. Appreciate it. How many people at Snake are working on this, by the way? Is it mostly you? Um, so as I said, Camus is a project from uh, Soluto. And oh, okay, Soluto, we were two people working on it. Um, and we're actually trying for more than a year to get a response from CNCF. Mm -hmm. So far, no response, but we keep trying. Okay. So you're saying you, you started the application process to go into sandbox or incubation? Yes, but we didn't get any response recently, like for more than eight months, I think. Okay. <laughs> Have you tried to get a sponsor? Or that, I mean, those are some of the steps, hopefully. Uh, we had sponsors. It was like it started like a more than a year ago, and it kind of stuck. Okay. Well, I mean, it seems like people here are pretty excited about it, so hopefully we can help with the momentum. Um, is there anything else that we can do? I guess we just go and uh, tweet about it, do social, like it. Yes. Excellent. Cool. Awesome. Are there any other questions? Uh, so, we say, say thanks for the presentation. So appreciate that. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Amir. It's great. I will share our concluding slides. I don't know if I need to take over, but let me see. Oh, yes. Thanks. Yes. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out on Twitter. I'd be happy to answer and help. Excellent. Um, so thanks again for joining. If this is your first time, this is our Weave online user group that we've done, I think, every other Tuesday uh, at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, if some of you know, I mentioned the GitOps Days event. So leading up to that, we did these GitOps Days community specials, which were a little bit more laid back. And we were also using it to test out all these platforms that we were going to uh, potentially use for the event itself. So we'll also be going back to those. Uh, I think we're going to be aiming for earlier on Thursdays. So um, like I mentioned, we're kind of wrapping up the spring season for the Weeb online user group, but um, please make sure to check out our um, meetup page here. That's still our uh, single source of truth on our calendar. So if you'd like to check out our um, future GitOps community activities, uh, make sure you check us out there. Um, as I mentioned, uh, GitOpsDays.com, make sure you register there. Even though the event is passed, it will give you access to the kit that has videos and um, sort of the annotated uh, categories of information. Um, and uh, you'll get an invitation to join the um, mailing list that's very not noisy and just on core core stuff around GitOps and the conversation kit. Um, otherwise, we have other things like the GitOps hands-on and the ebook here. Uh, if you are registered for this event, you will get an uh, email with all these links and more. So check us out and uh, come talk with us. So with that, thank you so much. And thank you to Omer. Thanks to Stacy for organizing this. And thanks to all of you for your great questions. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.